Hey YouTube, how's it going? So in my last short, you saw that I was having some trouble with this printer. Well, you saw the prints that failed that I was having printed on this printer. Um, I'm having some issues with layer adhesion and I'm meaning about middle of the print or somewhere along the print, there's uh, layer lines that don't quite connect. And so it causes the model to split apart. Um, typically it's caused by your z-axis screws having something lodged in them. Mine are all clean and I still have the same issue. My belts are tensioned, my bed's not warped. The only thing I can really check at this point uh, is the z-tensioner which is on the bottom side of this printer. And the problem being is I'm going to have to turn it on its back side in order to get access to that. But I have to disconnect the AMS up here and the filament tubes in the back that connect to the AMS. I should probably do some AMS maintenance. I might need to replace the PTFE tubes in there while I'm at it. And uh, if you're asking about what are my filament settings, um, these are standard bamboo PLA spools and PLA mat spools. I already have the filament dialed in. I don't have troubles with any other machines, nor have I had troubles besides the past couple of prints. Um, and nothing has changed besides the layer de-adhesion. So it leads me to believe that it is in fact either the Z belt or the Z screws, but the Z screws look fine. So I guess I'm just going to time lapse myself flipping this thing onto its back or well, I'll get everything disconnected and then I'll move it over to the bench over there and then I'll uh, do the tension of the Z belt and everything. Unless I can keep it here, I'll, I'll try, but I kind of doubt I will. There's not a good angle here to do anything really. One of the best parts about having a really tall printer is you can't reach back here to see, but uh, right there, that's a hub. I need to get this PTFE tube out because it goes right to the back of the AMS and there's no other way to get it out. So that'll be fun. I already disconnected the AMS and uh, I'm going to have to take most of this stuff off in order to fix that. So hopefully it's not too terrible. I got all this white dust from whatever, I don't know. But oh, I'm not looking forward to this. This thing's heavy. I got the printer off. Now I need to put it over there, which is right there. And then uh, gotta flip it onto its back. I think I can leave everything attached, but there's one thing I'm forgetting. Whenever you're gonna do stuff, you have to put the screws into the bed here to hold it in place. There's three of them, one on each side, um, before you tip it up so you don't unlevel it, even though you could just re-level it when you start. But it's better safe than sorry. She is super dusty, but I don't, I don't, I just don't care. I gotta get these two screws out and then uh, this should disconnect pretty quick. So there's that. Let's see if a 2.0 fits. It does. 2.0 millimeter hex head to get that out. Sorry. Let's get these out of here. If you're curious how this works, it's just a spring. <laughs> Legitimately just a spring. All right, that just comes right off. Disconnect the PTFE tube. Man, it's so dusty. Now I need to install the screws in the bed. So I'm gonna try and, nope, not turning that, apparently. Let's see if we can get this around. Oh my goodness. This is one of the first model P1Ps that I upgraded to a P1S. Now it is a POS until it gets fixed. All right, so I got those screws in. Turns out they were M3 by 16s, I believe. I'm pretty sure they were 20s though. But either way, I have the screws in there, so now I can tip this on its back. I have all this extra junk on the top of this printer, which you can't see. Let's see if I can angle that up a little bit. I have all that junk on the top up here, uh, like these AMS stands and everything. I'm just gonna do my best, and I'll probably move you guys back a little bit to like, I don't know, right here possibly. And now let's turn this onto its back now that everything's been removed and see if we can get to those Z tension screws. This is always nerve wracking. Oh God, it's heavy. Oh yeah, I got some plastic pieces for proto pasta spools over here. Okay, didn't fall out. So down here, let's see if you guys can see all that. That is the Z drive system. 
And I'm actually looking for this tensioner right here. But I really, oh, it is loose. Really loose. That explains a lot. Yep. Okay, well then, uh, I'm going to have to take apart this tensioner here, and I'm going to follow the Bamboo Lab instructions, and I'll walk you guys through it as I adjust these Z-tensioners. Yeah, I can feel it skipping steps right there. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Let's get the uh, tensioner taken off. I'll follow the instructions on the wiki, and then I'll let you know what I'm doing. So step one is to... Oh, man, there's no way you're going to be able to see that. Maybe. It says tilt the printer, pull the Z-axis belt to lower heat bed to the bottom and lock in the three auxiliary screws. That's already been done. Uh, I did that before I tipped it over. I just manually put the bed to the bottom by going through the menu. The second step is remove screws, right side down the printer, release the Z-tension spring and remove the three screws. So what it's saying is the Z-tensioner, it's actually supposed to be on this side but I'm not gonna put it, it does, I don't think it really matters if I'm being honest with you. Um, and then this is a 1.5 hex for these, and I need to release those three screws right there to free the tensioner. And the tensioner is this spring right here. So let's do that real quick. Now let's take out these 1.5s. I don't like taking screws out of plastic. It always worries me. These are self-tappers. Pull this out, come here. There's that one. And then, uh, wrong thing, here's this one. So those are the three screws. Not the big one in the middle, just those three little ones. Those are the 1.5s. Stick it to my magnetic mat there. And I could probably bring you guys down here and lower this. Let's see here. Oof, sorry about that. Let's see if I can't get you a little closer. All right. So, as you can see, I pulled out that screw, that screw, that screw. Now, the next steps are to Remove the Z-tensioner. So remove the Z-tensioner screw with a hex 2.0. So here's a hex 2. A little bit bigger than the 1.5, obviously. Put the 1.5 over here on the little mat. And I'll take out the 2. Oh my goodness. So that is very small. I already see some junk built up on that. Let's hope that's not what's causing the issue. All right, then it says to remove the Z timing belt. I don't want to do that. Uh, install this, so it says uh, remove the Z timing belt. So if you're looking at this, the easiest way to remove the Z timing belt is obviously to release this tensioner right there. Click it out, drop the belt down, pull the belt off of That Z tensioner. God, this is just never easy. I don't care what anybody says. Come here, you. They made it look so easy in the pictures. <laughs> see if I can get it off one of these ones up here, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So, let's see. I'm gonna try and angle you guys up towards that. Let's see if I can just lift you up real quick. So up here in the corner, it's a lot easier to get the belt out gonna kind of wiggle this back and forth and boom the belt comes out I'm gonna inspect the belt make sure there's no damages to it if you guys don't know how to check a belt it's fairly simple uh, you just go down the length of the belt make sure you don't see any rips or tears I would do it in front of the camera but uh, it makes it harder for me to see so I'm just gonna inspect this belt see a lot of okay that's a little bit of worry right there I see some little bit of nicks on there 
Doesn't look like it's affecting the belt. See a little nick right there. That's not a big deal. It doesn't look like it's affecting the belt. Overall, the belt looks pretty good. I for sure cannot see any actual alarming damage. I see a couple like pressure points caused by just use. These are the Z axis screws. If you don't know, by the way, this one feels a lot looser than this one. So that's probably another issue I'm having that might need to be tightened, but I'm just going to go through the steps now and see I'm taking off this Z idler as well. You can see the built up crud right there. And that's just from the belt itself. So let's get that cleaned off. Just going to kind of try and scrape it off. Should come off. It's mostly just old rubber. Then I'll clean it with some isopropyl. And then uh, try and get a lot of this junk off. All right, I'm gonna go clean it in some isopropyl and then I will be back. All right, so we got the tensioner all clean. It looks a lot better than it did. We got a lot of that stuff off. I also washed my hands since they rolled nasty. Um, I'm gonna check this idler, make sure there's nothing. This actually isn't the idler. This is the drive motor here for the Z. And then these are just the Z axes. That one feels good. That one feels tight. That one feels good. That could be the issue too but there's not much I can do about that. Maybe the Z screw's bent, I hope not. Um, but you know, I, I, I checked that, it didn't seem bent, so hopefully that's not the case. This goes in this way. Now, the next steps of this are to, let's see here, install the Z timing belt to the bottom of the printer, place as shown, and the as shown picture, I'm gonna try and get this in there, is, so we have it oriented like this right now. My phone's probably gonna turn, but we have it oriented like this. So it's just showing how to put the belt on the exact same way you took it off. Shocker, right, imagine that. Um, so we'll get this on here. And I'm just gonna leave you guys down there while I do that, because the important stuff happens down there. So I got that on, this was really easy. And you wrap it around this, up over the tensioner, down and on to the drive motor. I'm gonna take it off up here. Literally put it on exact same way you took it off. Get it onto this drive motor here. Or not drive motor, but the uh, axes. And there we are. We're all happy there. And now, Let's see what the next step of instructions say. It says, uh, remove the Z tensioner string. Confirm that the nut on the tensioner is in place. The nut in the tensioner is in place. It's actually, if you see that little pink in there, that's the thread lock from the little nut, the little bolt I pulled out. That's a thread lock that's in there. So that is in fact in place. Install a tensioner cover which is this thing again. So we want to install the spring, right? I believe the spring was like so. Uh, let's get it in there, come on. Let's see, how does the picture have this thing? Is that the longer tail or the shorter tail? It actually doesn't show you how to... It, never mind, it does too. Okay, so it says to put it on like so. Oh. Well, it doesn't have it all the way up there in the picture. And then to push this over and down, like that. Beautiful. I'm gonna try and push this nut up just a little bit more. I'll clean that off. I want this stuff back in there. Push this stuff there, put that back just a little bit. And then it says to reinstall this tensioning cover. And it tells you to install the lock, <laughs> the locking bolt first. So let's get this back on here the right way. 
No, third time's the charm here. Oh, come on you. It's pretty difficult reaching around a camera to, to do this. So we'll grab that. Get that threaded in. Perfect. And then we will put our three little screws back in. And this is where you switch back to the 1.5 millimeter. And you just simply screw these back in place. Oh, come on, this is gonna take forever. I have an electric screwdriver, but it's dead and I'm too lazy to charge it. Sorry. Now we'll get this one on. You guys like the butt of that screwdriver? It's right in your face. Next up is the last one. And then from there, I'll read the next set of instructions. That doesn't look like it's lined up, but it feels good. Yeah, there we go. It evened itself out. All right. So I can tell you from doing that, the belt is already tighter than it was by quite a bit. It says now put the printer upright and then remove the three screws on the lock slider. Uh, lock tensioner screws. Oh, okay, so remove the, so you go inside of the printer and you remove the three screws that are locking the bed in place. And then you come back and you tighten this up, which I haven't tightened it yet. So I guess I need to go let those loose. So I'm gonna step you guys back. I'm gonna transition to that and then I'll come back. All right, let's put the printer back up. Oh my God, it's so heavy. Why so heavy? I only actually put in two of the locking screws. I didn't put all three in. Let's get them out of here. So these are M3 by 16, I believe. I can't remember. I just kept going up in size until I hit the right one. So I didn't read that part of the wiki. I got that screw out. This screw out. And then we tip the printer back on its side, which makes me believe that we don't even need to put these in there in the first place. And then we remove, and then we lock that tensioning lock nut on the bottom or bolt, whatever you want to call it. So let's flip this back now real quick. God, this makes me nervous every time. Uh, there we go. Now we'll tighten up this tension lock nut now that everything's happy. And these belts feel a lot better than they did when I started. So hopefully that fixed my issue. Let's get back in here, turn this back on its head. Oh my God. All right. Whew, that sucked. Now I'm gonna check the wiki one last time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And then uh, it says to plug it in and run a self-test. So I guess we'll move back over to its original spot over there and then uh, give it a nice little self-test and hope that works. All right, so we're here in the calibration menu. We're gonna go calibration. May take about 26 minutes. Do you wanna start your calibration now? I'm gonna hit yes. I'm gonna run auto calibrate and I'm gonna let it do its thing. Looks like the printer's working. So I'm gonna let that go and then I will we'll see you when that's done. And if it ran this, then the self-test is probably working. Well, after doing that uh, Z idler and Z belt tension, everything seems to be working just fine. It passed the calibration without issue. So now I guess I'll do so, uh, maybe a test benchy, I think, and then That'll be the end of it, but I'm gonna end this here. Call it good, call it a win. And now we get to do the AMS. So uh, look forward to that up in the next couple of days. Thanks everybody. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what awesome things I should try to print on this printer and hopefully it'll work.